How's it going guys? In this video we're going to keep going with the thermochemistry series. This time we're going into calorimetry heat flow. So basically we're just trying to calculate enthalpy change for different reactions. Um, and yeah, uh, this time I actually wrote out the problems on these. Save some time here. Um, we'll just jump right in. You mix one liter of one molar BaNO3 to solution at 29 degrees Celsius with one liter of one mole molar and Na2SO4 at 29 degrees Celsius in a calorimeter or calor calorimeter uh, and the mixture or the mixed temp rises to 34.7 degrees Celsius calculate the enthalpy change per mole of BaSO4 formed so in this case we're basically going to start off by okay we can assume the solution has a density of 1.00 grams per ml and the heat capacity 4.184 joules per gram times Kelvin. Uh, this is kind of like pretty common I think in a lot of these problems they'll just kind of throw out the density and the heat capacity of water because it's probably pretty close and you know you, you can use that to get a rough estimate. So here we're going to use the Q of the solution, the heat of the solution is equal to M solution times C solution times delta T for the solution. I know it seems kind of monotonous to write solution each time and obviously you don't need to do that. Um, I like to do it because it's relevant. You're not just looking for one specific thing. This is a mixture, uh, well, it's a solution, so uh, we should treat it as such. D equals M over V. Um, I, I always remember that as a heart, so um, I don't know if you have like and then just cut it in half, break the heart. It's a easy way to remember that formula. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll use that in all kinds of random applications. Um, you can just use do some quick algebra to figure out that M equals D times V. Uh, and then we'll just keep going with that because that's what we're, you know, that's one of our givens. Um, and here we go. So we have the one, the density is the 1.00 grams per ml. That's our D. Now we have our V, which is going to be Okay, so basically we have to, in order to find out what our volume is, basically, um, let's see here, we have one liter of that, one liter of that. So our whole solution, because again, we're, we're figuring out for the solution, is going to be two liters. Uh, in this case, we'll, we'll say that's 2000 ml, because we have an ml right there. For our density, just make sure those are compatible. And then it's just one times 2000, 2000 grams. So it's pretty easy. Um, and it's just kind of a weird, kind of an abstract idea, but um, once you figure out grams per mole, I mean, uh, grams per ml, uh, ml here, grams here, we're, you know, we're going to get it pretty easily. Um, now we'll just bring that down. Q of the solution is going to be equal to, we have now our mass of the solution, which is going to be 2,000 grams. And then we're going to have our heat capacity which we're told to assume is 4.184 uh, joules per grams times Kelvin and then we have our heat change which in this case let's see what we got um, you mix this with this 29 29 um, 34 so that is going to be 5.7 5.7 Kelvin and Okay, we're going to get our Q of the solution is going to be 47697.6 joules because, um, again, we can double check the units. We've got grams here, grams on the bottom, um, Kelvin on top, Kelvin on bottom, we're left with joules. So we got that many joules. Um, now, what is the question asking? Because now we, we got more information. Let's figure out what they're asking. Calculate the enthalpy change per mole of BASO4. 
So um, we're going to have n is equal to molarity. Um, molarity is equal to, we're just kind of stating things that we know, mass or moles over volume. So let's figure out now we're going to do, you know, we're going to figure out what exactly is happening here. So we have BA NO3 2, which it doesn't explicitly write it out like this, but we know that it's being added to um, the Na2SO4. It's going to yield something. So in this case, we can assume that if there's some kind of reaction going on here, you separate it out. Again, this is back to Gen Chem 1, but um, kind of just react this BaSO4 plus NaNO3, and that's going to be 2. 2Na, 2Na, 2NO3, 2NO3, 1Ba, 1Ba, 1SO4, 1SO4. So cool, cool. We just made balance that equation, and now we've pretty much done most of the work. Now we're just going to throw it in. Um, to what do we have here? We got a double replacement reaction there. We're gonna do delta H and figure out what we have on the bottom. We're gonna have per one mole, and we're gonna want to have negative four, seven, six, nine, seven, point six joules per one mole and that will equal we're looking for again the BASO4 and BASO4 we only have one mole of um, let's see here to get negative 48.0 kilojoules so obviously there's just going to be one but uh, we go from joules, and I think that it makes sense to put it into kilojoules. <clears throat> Excuse me, because that's the way that these are generally shown. Um, so we have this right here is our answer. And then I won't write it out, but a lot of times the follow-up question is going to be, is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? There you go. So that's that's a good way of remembering. Uh, if H plus, or I mean, if, if delta H is greater than zero, it's going to be endo. If it's less than zero, it's going to be exo. In this case, it's a negative number, so it's less. So we're going to have an exothermic process. And uh, yep, so that's that's pretty pretty straightforward for that one, I think. Um, we'll move on to number two. Okay, so you mix 50 ml of one molar HCl with 50 ml of one molar NaOH. The temp of the resulting solution rises from 17 degrees Celsius to 29 degrees Celsius. Calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction per mole of HCl reacted. Okay, and then again, we'll just give our assumptions. Um, assume that, let's say, um, total volume of solution is going to be 100.0 ml. Uh, the density is going to equal 1.00 grams per ml. And uh, specific heat is equal to 4.184 joules per gram times Kelvin. Okay, so there we go. We got a lot of information and we can build off of that. Uh, this is a good time to hit pause if you want and just give this problem a shot. Um, and uh, if not, I'm just going to keep going ahead. So here we go. Um, we're looking for the enthalpy change and we know that this is going to be a relevant formula. <clears throat> Negative heat over moles. And another relevant formula we have is Q equals MC delta T. Another one we have is D equals M over V. And like I said, I'm just kind of throwing in things we know, uh, things that might be useful based on the information we have. M is equal to D V. <clears throat> and again, you can remember the D equals M over V like that. Um, 
so let's see what we got. So all these givens are going to be pretty useful to us. We'll just kind of gather information uh, based on what we have. So first off, we can do the m equals dv would equal. Um, so let's see here. We're going to have the density is one gram per ml. And <clears throat> we'll take that, we'll go with 100 ml. Luckily, they're, they're in the same units. We don't have to do any converting or anything. We're just going to have 1 times 100, 100 grams. So this is pretty easy. It can be a lot more complex than this, but I think this is a good way to learn it. Um, now we'll see what we got. So Q equals, you can try to throw it into this formula now, 100 grams times the specific heat, which is given 4.184 joules grams per Kelvin. And that is all going to be times the delta T. And in this case, what is the delta T? We have 17 to 29. So we're gonna have 12 Kelvin is, is our difference here, our, our change in temperature. Um, so what do we got here? We have 5020.8. And that's going to be joules. Uh, and we can just double check our units again. Like we should always probably, you know, if there's time, I'd say always do it. So you're left with joules. Um, now from here, we'll see what did we really learn? Um, Basically, it's asking for the enthalpy change. We figured out the heat, and that's one of these variables. Um, so now we can say, like we did in an earlier problem, like one of the, the one above, I believe, um, N equals M times V. Um, actually, I don't think we use this one. This is, we're, we're doing, we're finding moles from molarity and volume. So we have the molarity, which I kind of did this slightly squiggly M. Um, we're going to have the 1.0 molar because that's what we had right there. And so that's for HCl, HCl um, times. And what do we have for our volume now? We're going to use 0 0.05 liters. And that is because basically we have what would be the equivalent of we're taking half of what we have in total because we're looking for per mole of HCl released. And um, that's based on the formula. So here we have the, it's just 1.05, so 0 0.05 moles of HCl. And in this case, we're going to have. Okay, so we just figured out the moles. Now we can finally plug it back into this formula. So delta H equals negative, uh, so negative Q, which was 5020.8 joules, which was positive, so we made it negative. That's good. And then 0 0.05. And that's going to equal negative 100416 joules. Um, which we can put into 100.4 kilojoules, and this is joules per mole HCl, which will carry over per mole HCl. There we go, and that's what it's asking for. Calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction per mole of HCl. So if you need to, too, you can write out the the whole equation and everything like that, but I think that it's probably not necessary for this one. Uh, it probably is not going to help you too much. Okay, so finally we're going to have our third and final problem for this set. Um, work with the room I have left here. Um, okay, so you mix 50 ml of 0.1 molar AgNO8 uh, NO3 uh, solution at 25 degrees Celsius with 50 ml of 0.1 molar HCl at 25 degrees Celsius in a calorimeter, and the mixture temperature rises to 27.2 degrees Celsius. 
calculate the enthalpy of the reaction. So where do we go from here? Um, we're going to assume, give us some assumptions. We're going to assume the solution's density is equal to, again, 1.00 grams per ml. And the heat capacity is 4.184. Okay. Obviously, it's not always going to be that, but I just think that, you know, we're simplifying these things because those are the things that, you know, you shouldn't really have to worry about, I think, in this context. So here we go. We're going to just plow through. We have uh, probably a benefit in this case of actually drawing out the formula. So um, we're reacting AgNO3 with hydrochloric acid. And what are we going to get? Okay, so AgCl plus HNO3, double check that's balance, 1 Ag, 1 Ag, NO3, NO3, there's one of everything, we're good to go, and the charges are also balanced. Okay, so there's our formula. Uh, we'll have Q equals MC delta T, and just kind of see what we can do with that. So first of all, um, you know, the first thing is mass. Did it say how much mass? Let's see. We have a volume, volume, molar, molar. But we have here, it's one gram per ml. And we have a total of 100 ml. So we know it's going to be 100 grams. And again, just be careful not to isolate a specific thing. We're looking at 50 ml and 50 ml of the mixture. Um, then we have the heat capacity, which was given. And if it's not given, then you'll get another variable that you can use to solve for it. And then our temperature change is just going to be 2.2 Kelvin. Okay, so we have, we got 920, oops, 0.48 joules. Okay, so what did we figure out? We're, we figured out the amount of heat that occurs, uh, but that's not what it's asking for. It's asking for enthalpy. Um, so we can throw that back into this formula, negative Q over N, but in this case, it's gonna be our negative 920.48 joules over N. We still don't know N. So let's solve for N. We got N equals the moles or molar times volume that's going to equal 0 0.100 m times we're going to have 0 0.0500 liters and again that's how many liters 50 ml um, because in this case we're actually we're, we're looking for the moles we have 0 0.005 mole yeah, okay. And now we have N, we have uh, negative Q, and we're just gonna throw those in. So we have, it's equal to negative 920.48 joules. And just make sure the sign is the opposite in this equation as what you've solved it to be, because the equation involves the negative Q. So I, that, that's like something that people sometimes miss is if you, if you don't see the negative or you forget it or whatever, uh, you know, when you mix up your signs, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change the outcome. Uh, and you hopefully will get partial credit. But if it's multiple choice, then there's probably less forgiving with something like that. Now um, we have that over what we just solved for, the 0 0.005 mole. And we're going to get negative 184096 joules per mole. And we can make that into, it's gonna be 184.1 kilojoules per mole. Not bad. Cool, all right, so this is three problems, calorimetry, calorimetry, heat flow. Um, yeah, hopefully this helps.